viewers and welcome to V Concept College English. My name is Ernest. Today I want to start a new series on lessons and structure. And this series is entitled 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. Therefore, in this series, we shall look at the reasons for misused expressions in English and offer tips for avoiding these mistakes in your speech and writings. Can they follow up with all the videos that we shall be uploading in this series to catch a glimpse of the full gist? Have a happy view. Welcome to the 19th episode of our 21 in 1 video series entitled 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. In the 15th episode of this series, we discussed a few rules on how to combine verbs in expressions. This episode is going to be an extension of that particular episode as we shall be talking about verb moods. Mood is a grammatical category that refers to the form a verb takes rather than its meaning in an expression. The various moods in English include the indicative mood, the interrogative mood, the imperative mood, conditionals, and subjectives. Subjectives are used to express opinions, emotions, suggestions, as well as wish, while conditionals talk about a particular expression whose occurrence depends on another. Under these two particular moods, Verbs behave in uncertain ways, as we shall see in such expressions as it is time to sleep, I suggest we took a break. He insists on ice sitting, it's vital I don't miss the flight. She talks as if she was a millionaire. If I am a millionaire, if I was you, I would rather you wrote the letter. I would rather you write it now. You had better written. Now, in this expression, we are going to discover that past tense verbs are used to express present action, while present tense verbs are used to express future actions. Right away, let's get started with our first expression set, which is, it's time we sleep. Our first non-standard expression in this episode is, it is time we go to bed, with the words go or the line in the expression to indicate a lexical error, as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, instead of saying it is time we go to bed, you could say it is time we went to bed. Now, what are the grammar tips to explain that? Past subjectives are used to express present actions. In other words, verbs take past tense form to express present action. If an expression is subjective, please take a good note of this, that past tense verbs are used to express present action. So, in other words, we do not use present tense verbs to express present action if an expression is subjective. Therefore, instead of saying it is time we go to bed, you would say it is time we went to bed. So that is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. With that, we move forward to our second expression set, which is I suggest we take a break. Our second non-standard expression from word set 172 is I suggest we took a short break with the word took or the line in the expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, instead of saying, I suggest we took a short break, you could say, I suggest we take a short break. That's going to be a little deviation from what we established in our introduction, where we said that the past tense verbs are used to express present actions. Looking at this expression as a present action, one would think that the verb to use in it should be the past tense form. But on the contrary, it is the present tense form that is preferred in it. 
The reason is simple. This particular expression is the combination of two moods. Two moods are being combined here. In this expression, we have the imperative mood as well as the subjective mood. Whenever two moods are being combined in a subjective expression, in other words, whenever the imperative mood is being combined with the subjective mood, then the rule is going to be altered. Present tense form or present tense verbs are going to be used to express present actions. And you can easily identify such combination with the use of such ways as I suggest or I demand or I recommend. So whenever you see such words in an expression, you know that that's an imperative expression. And if it is now being put in the form of subjective, then the verb to use to express present tense or present action must be the benefinitive verb or the present tense verb. So instead of saying, I suggest we took a short break, you could say, I suggest we take a short break. This is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. With that, we'll move forward to our next expression set, which is, he insists on I sitting. Our third non-standard expression from word set 173 is, he insisted on I sitting down with the word I underlined in the expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, instead of saying he insisted on I sitting down, you could say he insisted on me sitting down. Now, what are the grammar tips to explain that? When you look at this expression very well, you would understand that it is a subjective expression. Once again, and like we have established in the course of our introduction, subjective expressions are identified as those expressions that are expressing mood, opinion, wish, or intention. So they are special expressions and you can easily identify them in spoken or in written form. So whenever you find such expressions, the verb that is present in it is now being followed by a pronoun. Then you would understand that the pronoun is acting as the object of the verb. Whenever a pronoun is acting as object of the verb in a subjective expression, then the particular pronoun has to take the object case or the object form. I, me, we, us, you, you, he, him, she, her. So the pronoun is going to be used in that expression. That is when a pronoun is coming after a verb in a subjective expression. The pronoun must be the objective case. So instead of saying he insisted on I sitting down, you would say he insisted on me sitting down. Stop talking about I writing the letter. No, you would say, stop talking about me writing the letter. Fine, talking about me writing the letter. So stop talking about that is a demand, an imperative case. So whenever you have a subjective expression, such that the verb in it is being followed by a pronoun, the pronoun must take the objective case. So this is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. With that, we we'll move forward to our fourth expression set, which is, it's vital I don't miss my flight. Our fourth non-standard expression from West set 174 is, it's vital we do not miss our flight. With the words, do not underline in the expression to indicate vibrosity as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now we are saying that this expression is verbose or redundant because too many words than necessary have been used in it. Therefore, instead of saying it's vital we do not miss our flight, you could say it's vital we not miss our flight. And what are the grammar tips to explain that? Negative subjectives are formed by adding not, simply not, before the subjective verb. 
Technically, the we usually have two verbs in a subjunctive expression. The first verb is the indicator. That is what tells us that the expression is a subjunctive expression. And then within the expression, you are going to find another verb again, like we have miss in this expression. So if it's going to be a negative subjunctive, then the second verb, that is the subjunctive verb in the expression, would be introduced with the adverb not, without any need for do in it. Therefore, instead of saying it's vital we do not miss our flight, you would say it's vital we not miss our flight. So this is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. With that, we'll move forward to our next expression set, which is she talks as if she was a millionaire. On that word set 175, we have two expressions to consider. The first one is she talks as if she was a millionaire. And the second one is I wish I lived in New York with the word was or the line in the first expression and live or the line in the second expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which these two expressions can be classified. Now, I'd like you to pay good attention to the way we shall be analyzing these expressions as they border on past subjectives. And past subjectives behave like conditionals. That is our first grammar tip. You know that conditionals come under a separate verb mood. We have the conditional verb mood. Conditionals traditionally have two clauses. And we are now saying that past subjectives also have two clauses. And the way to interpret them is very important as it somehow interferes with the way conditionals are interpreted. Like we have here in red, past subjective is equal to indicative plus the subjective expression. So whenever you have a past subjective, you are going to expect to have two clauses in that particular expression such that the beginning part of the expression is an indicative expression or the indicative mood while the second part of the expression would be the subjective mood. You would easily identify the indicative mood as containing expressions of words like as if or if or things like wish. So when you have such expressions in the beginning part of a sentence which is subjective in nature or by mood, then you are going to expect that in the subjective part of the expression or the subjective clause would contain a verb in its past tense form. That is basic. Then, if the verb to be is used in the subjective clause, that is the second part of the expression, and it is verb to be, it is going to take the form of where, regardless of the subject, whether the subject is singular or plural, it will take the form of where. You already understand that be, that is verbs like is or am, they cannot be used in their present tense form to express present action. So, in the beginning, we established that past tense verbs are used to express present actions. We are now saying that if it is the verb to be like is or am or are, they are going to take the past tense form of where, regardless of the subject, whether it is singular or plural. Therefore, instead of saying she talks as if she was a millionaire, you would say, she talks as if she were a millionaire. And instead of saying, I wish I lived in New York, you would say, I wish I lived in New York. So this is the way we can talk about these expressions in everyday usage. 
With that, we we'll move forward to our next expression set, which is, if I am a millionaire. Our next non-standard expression from word set 176 is, if I am a millionaire, I will set up a charitable organization. With the words am and will underlining the expression to indicate a legal error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, instead of saying, if I am a millionaire, I will set up a charitable organization, you could say, if I were a millionaire, I would set up a charitable organization. Now, what are the grammar tips to explain that? Under the grammar tips, we have that when the past subjective is used in an if clause, the main clause usually contains a modal verb like would, and sometimes verbs like should, might, or could could be used. Now, this expression is a follow-up with what we explained under 175, where we established the fact that past subjectives can be interpreted just like conditionals, in that they have two clauses, as you have in conditional moods or conditional expressions. I will also establish other words in 175 that when the verb to be appears in a subjective expression, it, of course, you know that subjective would always take the past tense verb. But in this case, if it is the verb to be, then it is specifically going to take the where. So that is why we have here, if I wear a millionaire, not if I am a millionaire, if I wear a millionaire, because it is just expressing a wish and that makes it subjective. And since it is subjective, it is past tense verbs that are used to express present intention or present actions. Therefore, you are going to say, if I were a millionaire. Then we are also saying here that in past subjective, the subjective of the main clause, like we have here now, if I were a millionaire, is the subjective clause. Why I would set up a charitable organization is the main clause. The main clause must take the verb, the modal verb would. And sometimes you can have should that like we said or might or could. So in the subjective clause, you are going to have a past tense verb. And if it is the verb to be, where would be preferred, irrespective of the subject that is present in it. Whether single or plural, it will take the plural past tense form where. And in the main clause, you're going to have words in it. So in this expression, instead of saying, if I am a millionaire, I will set up a charitable organization, you are going to say, if I were a millionaire, I would set up a charitable organization. So this is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. With that, we'll move forward to our next expression set, which is, if I was you. On the word set 177, we have a set of two expressions to consider. The first one is, if he were late for work, he would get into trouble. And the second one is, if he was late for work, he probably got into trouble. On that error type, we have that both expressions are grammatically correct. We have decided to use them under this word set, however, as a follow-up with the explanation that we provided under word set 176, where we established the fact that past subjectives are commonly conflicted with conditionals. Now, under the grammar tips, we have that this first expression, A, is a past subjective, while B is a conditional expression in the conditional mood. Number two, the, sub the subjective mood is commonly confused with the indicative mood of conditionals as both use the if clause. Now, when you look at these two expressions very closely, you will discover that this is the subjective clause, and this is the indicative clause of this conditional expression. 
Now, the subjective clause, you know, of course, in the subjective clause, we have the main clause and the subjective clause, and then in the conditional clause, or the conditional expression, we have the main clause, and then the conditional expression, which we can also describe as the indicative clause or the indicative conditional clause. Now, when you look at these two expressions very closely, you will discover that both the subjective clause and the indicative clause of this conditional use the if clause, if he were late for work, if he was late for work. Now, this is where the conflict is coming from. Remember we said that the verb to be in a subjective clause does not agree with the subject. Whether it is singular or plural, if it is verb to be, then it's going to take the where, that is the plural form, where, so that was cannot be expected in this position. Now, if you have an expression like, if you be late for work, something should quickly tell you that that expression is a subjective expression and indicating the fact that the event is an unlikely scenario that is it's something it's just a wish it is not something that is likely to take place it is not an event that is likely to occur however the indicative clause of a conditional expression, which also uses if, goes in a different direction. This one says something like, if he was late for work, something will tell you here that there's an agreement between this subject and the verb here. And this tells you that it is not a subjective. And as a matter of fact, this one is a conditional expression. Which of that standard usage we have here that it paints a likely scenario, that is an event that is very likely to occur. So it is expressing the conditional mood. Then another thing I want us to establish before we move off is that a conditional expression, a conditional expression can be interpreted in two ways. In other words, we have two forms of interpretations for conditional expressions. We have what we call a conditional real expression and then we have a conditional unreal expression. So if you have an if clause in the indicative form of a clause, let's say you don't know whether it is a, subject, a subjective clause or whether it is the indicative clause of a conditional, but it uses an if clause, they try to find out whether there's an agreement between the subject and the verb. Okay, let's just say once, it is, once there is an agreement between the subject and the verb, you know it is a conditional expression. So the best form of interaction or intersection that we can draw from these two clauses is that a conditional or real future paints a similar future as a subjective expression because a subjective expression paints the picture of an unlikely event whereas a conditional or real future paints the picture of an unreal future. So we can say that the interpretation of a subjective clause or a subjective expression is similar to the interpretation of a conditional unreal future. However, the construction remains different. In that, in a subjective expression, there is no agreement between the subject verb part of the subjective clause, whereas there is an agreement between the subject and verb part of the indicative clause of the conditional expression. So this is one way that we can distinguish between a conditional clause and a subjective clause. Take a very good note that both expressions are possible in English. In that, if it is a subjective expression, then it means it is painting the picture of an unlikely event. That is an event that is not likely to take place. But if it is conditional, real future, then it is painting the picture, the scenario 
or the picture of a scenario that is very likely to occur. So instead of saying, if he were late for work, he would get into trouble, getting that considered as a conditional, you would understand that it is a subjective. And then if he was late for work, he probably got into trouble. This is a very likely scenario or a situation that very likely took place. So this is how we can discuss these expressions in everyday usage. With that, we we'll move forward to our next expression set, which is, I would rather wrote the letter now. Our next non-standard expression from word set 178 is, I would rather wrote the letter now. With the words, would rather wrote or the line in the expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, instead of saying, I would rather write the letter now, you could say, I would rather write the letter now. And what are the grammar tips to explain that? Would rather does not indicate the subjective mood. It is considered a modal auxiliary verb. Therefore, it is treated as modal auxiliary plus bare infinitive like we discussed in the 15th episode of this 21 in 1 video series, we did establish the fact that that is other verb combination or how to combine verb, verbs in expressions. We did establish the fact that when you are combining a modal verb with a lexical verb or a normal verb, then that lexical verb or ordinary verb would take the present simple form, which is technically described as the bare infinitive form. Now, coming back to our expression, when you look at this expression very closely, you, despite it is expressing something that is close to a wish or intention, it is not considered a subjective because it has a single subject. Both verbs have a single subject in I. So, since this expression is used in this form, then it is not considered a subjective. Instead of saying, I would rather write the letter now, you would say, I would rather write the letter now, which is a plain expression and not a subjective expression. This is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. With that, we we'll move forward to our next word set, 179, which is, I would rather you write the letter now. Our next non-standard expression from word set 179 is, I would rather you write the letter now. With the word write or the line in the expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, instead of saying, I would rather you write the letter now, you could say, I would rather you wrote the letter now. And what are the grammar tips to explain that? Under the grammar tips, we have that. Would rather expresses the subjective mood when its subject is different from the subject of the following verb. When you look at this expression very closely, you will discover that would rather has a different subject from the verb that is following it. Whereas I is the subject of would rather, you is the subject of right in this non-standard expression. And like we discussed under word set 178, we said that would rather is not considered a subjective because would and the verb following it had the same subject. But in a situation where would rather and the verb following it are having different subjects, then the expression is going to be considered a subjective expression. When past tense, like we discussed on that word set 171 at the beginning of this video, where we said that past subjective are used to indicate present actions. Therefore, since this expression is a present action, it will take the past subjective. We would say, I would rather you wrote the letter now. Instead of saying, I would rather you write the letter now, you would say, I would rather you wrote the letter now. So, this is how we can talk about this expression in everyday English. 
With that, we move forward to our final expression set in this episode, which is, you had better written. Our final non-standard expression in this episode is, you had better written the letter now. With the words, had better written, underline the expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, instead of saying you had better written the letter now, you could say you had better write the letter now. And what are the grammar tips to explain that? Under the grammar tips, number one, we have that had better does not express the subjective mood. It is considered a modal auxiliary verb just like should or could. Therefore, it must be followed by the bare infinitive verb, as discussed in the 15th episode of this series, where we established that whenever a modal auxiliary verb is being combined with a lexical verb, then the lexical verb or the ordinary verb must take the simple present form or the bare infinitive form. Therefore, in this expression, instead of saying you had better written the letter now, you could say you had better write the letter now, where had better is being treated as a modal verb and being followed or combined with the lexical verb, and the lexical verb takes the simple present form. You had better write the letter now. So this is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. And that brings us to the end of the 19th episode of our 21 in 1 video series. Stay blessed till we meet again.